And so we've discussed in the Pacific, we have the strong hurricane season this year. So Texas was affected by the hurricanes in the Atlantic, keeping heat from, or keeping moisture from coming in. And hurricanes in the Pacific, moving moisture so fast that it didn't rain out much in Texas and flowed further north into areas such as Kansas. But in the long term, the Pacific is cold. And what this means for most of the areas affected by it and the western part of the United States is it's dry and it's cold. And just ask California how that's affected them. So with the current conditions of the Pacific and the Atlantic, the image here on the top left is the way it used to be. I'm, I'm starting to get old enough that I'm catching myself talking about the good old days back when I was 12 or 13 and apparently everything was wonderful, just ask me. But in this case, weather-wise, it was. You had good rainfall over a large amount of the North America and it came slow, more slowly and more steadily. It didn't mean you didn't have bad years. Didn't even mean that you didn't have a series of bad years. But there was a bit more dependability. That top right image is the current conditions when you don't have any weather effects besides the PDO and the AMO. No El Nino, no La Nina, no MJO or anything else. And as you can see, certain areas still get dependable rainfall. And there's a certain area in the Midwest that in the past and the present gets good rainfall. But the current situation does not allow for dependable rainfall over much of North America. And then when you have an El Nino, it changes it even more. So the PDO changed in 2005. We had 10 years where people were trying to get used to the new weather patterns. And now we have an incredibly strong El Nino just throwing everything else out of whack. But it was good news for Texas. And that's a good thing, considering I'm now standing here in Texas. I'm glad I can deliver some good news. And so these are the conditions that you can look at involving agriculture and cattle in North America during our normal trends, where as you can see, it's dry throughout most of the area, including in Texas, and during an El Nino. And there's very little agricultural areas. There's some, but there's very little that get dependable rainfall throughout the entire span of our current PDO and AMO. And these conditions are expected to last at least another 10 to 15 years. So that means that we're likely to have at least one or two more La Ninas and one more El Nino in that time frame. 